Hello all, welcome to CAE Bootcamp. I'm Tara. I'm working as a senior FE engineer at Decibel, sir. Today, we are in our module two, that is 2D meshing. Earlier to this 2D meshing, we have done with getting started with the hypermesh. In the module one, we have discussed about okay, what, what is the need of the finite element analysis or files, re, file related things and basic operation with the hypermesh. In continuation to the module one, in module two, we are going to discuss about meshing. What, what is meshing, why it is required, and what is the necessity of extracting the mid-surface, those things we are going to discuss in the module two. Let's get start to the meshing. See, as we can see in the image, the left one is the tab model, and the second one is the finite element model. In this module two, we are going to build the we are going to build the elements for this model using triangular elements and quadrilateral elements by extracting the mid surface. So, how to extract the mid surface? And is there any earlier procedures or earlier taken care for the CAD before extracting the mid surface? These things we learn today. See, these are the these are the things we are going to discuss in the today's session. Editing the geometry it means before extracting the mid surface also we need to do some geometry correction as we as we did yesterday's class by after that we need to extract the mid surface as the hypermesh provide three three to four options to extract the mid surface after extracting the mid surface if required any geometry correction that should be that should be taken care and next is we are in, we are introducing to the meshing like what are the elements available in the hypermesh doing auto meshing after automation, we need, if required, we are going with the remeshing, that is for the better elements. Then after creating certain elements, we are going with the quality that after creating some number of elements, I need to justify whether my elements are qualified or not. Then later on, assigning the thickness. These things we'll discuss one by one. As we can see this model, as we have seen this model, this CAD, like before proceeding for extracting the mid surface, I need to review the CAD thoroughly that if requires any geometry, if any missing lines or if any duplicate lines are if, if required, we need to create some surfaces, not the geometry, some surfaces we are going to create. As we can see, for this complete volume surface, here, here we can see some of the red lines are there. I'm keeping it in a wireframe mode and I'm visualizing this CAD. See, to extract the mid surface, the thing should be like, it should be volume, volume, volume CAD. It means all the surfaces should be enclosed. Then if it is enclosed means I shouldn't get this red line. As we know, the geometry topology options for any geometry the hypermesh represents if it is a free line it is an it is not connected surface if it is a green line it is a connected surface so <clears throat> we are seeing some of the red lines are there see just keep it in the geometry in a wireframe and observe the cad here some of the red lines are there so what i'm going to do before extracting the mid surface i am going to fill this surface how I'm going to fill this means I'm in the 2D page. Just I went for the ruled option and I'm creating the surface to it. Why I'm creating the surface? I need a good mid surface. So for the good mid surface, the required geometry should be very clean. Then only I can able to get the good mid surface and the proper, proper mid surface. So to do that, I'm going to correct my geometry by creating a surface where it is necessary. Now I'm keeping it in a wireframe again and checking for the other lines or other surfaces if required. Now you can able to see complete volume surface or volume CAD. Here I'm not, I'm not looking, see, I'm not looking any free edges, only green lines. It means it is a shared one and it is a complete volume. As I mentioned, for the today's 2D topic, for the to do 2D machine, 
I need, uh, I require a mid surface. Why mid surface is required means, see the component you are seeing in the image, it is having lesser thickness. So for that reason, I'm going to extract the mid surface. After extracting the mid surface, on the mid surface, we are going to build 2D elements. To do that, now my geometry is fine. Now I will go with the extract in the mid surface. The mid surface option is available in the geometry page. As you can see, I'm in the geometry page. Click on the mid surface panel. If you click on the mid surface panel, it will take for this sub panel. It will take you for this sub panel. Before proceeding for the mid surface, there is an option called extraction options. There is an option called extraction option. In this drop down, you can able to see we can extract using these four options. Using these four options, we can extract this. These four options see specifically meant for the different operations or different kinds of surfaces. As you can see here, the first one is offset plus planes plus sweep is there. It means we will use this first option when we having a curved geometry or when we having a plane, uh, circular geometry. The second one is offset plus planes is there. It means we are going to use it for the component like this. As you are seeing in the image, we are going to use the second one option. The next one is only the offset. Only offset means as the name indicates, just it will give one surface in between the two surfaces. In between the two surfaces, it will give. No matter what is the thickness, whether if, if it is a variable thickness, it will not go into that. Just it will extract one random surface in between the plane, wherever it is. Just in, whether it is a 5 mm thickness or whether it is a 3 mm thickness. So it's directly go on extract in the mid surface. <clears throat> we'll do one by one and we, you just observe the mid surface, how we will get using a different mid surface extraction option. In the extraction option, I'm going with the first one, offset, play plus sweep, I'm going. Come back to auto extraction, click on the surface. If it is a volume surface, if your CAD is a volume surface, in a single click, your complete model should get selected. In a single click, it should get selected. Say extract. It means I'm asking my software to extract or to give one mid plane between the two planes. See, on the left corner of this, it will show it is ready. This is a status bar. As we discussed yesterday, this is a status bar. Once the operations is done, once the work is done, it will show something is ready. If not, it will show the error. Okay, 80% of the 80% is completed. Or sometimes it will show, for example, if you are going to delete some, some options means it will show elements are not deleted. Like that in the status bar, it will, it will keep on showing the different messages according to the sub panels or panels we are doing. See, now I got the mid surface. As soon as the mid surface is extracted, you can see in the model tree, see, this is a model tree, the automatically one mid surface collector get created. It is the soft, it will get created by software itself. We have not manual, I'm not created manually. After extracting the mid surface, it will get gets created automatically. Now I'm done with the mid surface. Let's check the mid surface. As you can see, in between the two lines, see, in between these two surfaces, this is this is my surface one and this is my surface two. In between these two, one more surface has created. One more surface has created. See, in between these two, one more surface has created. Switch on only the mid surface component. See, as we know, As we know, in this model tree, we can switch on and switch off the CAD, which are not required and which are required for the current operations. See, <clears throat> now I'm, uh, I'm switching on only the mid surface and I'm, I'm observing the CAD. Just visualize the CAD, switch on the original CAD and start observing the CAD. See, my original CAD is like this, but I have a, got a mid surface like this. See, you can see the surface is not properly came. 
the surface is not properly came and you can observe here also in the opposite side also it is same only and this side also it has came let's flip the model and check for other issues if any okay in the bottom side it came correctly and here we are observing some of the yellow lines as we know the yellow lines appears only if it is duplicated or if it is sharing between the three surfaces see the rib is sharing between the surface one surface two and surface three so there is an occurrence of yellow line as we can see this is a valid line and coming to the this ribs these surfaces are called ribs these are rectangular ribs we call it in a hypermesh this is a rib or uh, this is also a rib there are two types of rib one is triangular rib one is squared or rectangular rib these are the ribs we call it as now i am coming to the main part of this one i am switch on the original cad just observe the cad see i need a connectivity between this surface to this surface but i have got only this much i have got only this much of cad so i need to do some manual work i need to do some manual work instead of that what i am going to do i am deleting this mid surface i will switch on the original cad i will try with the second option i'll try with the second option as i discussed same way in the extraction option i am keeping as a offset the planes i have kept then i came for the extraction option and i am extracting the mid surface as soon as mr mid surface is extracted here you can see the new collector has created i have just deleted this mid surface but i i have got created the new mid surface switch off the original cad and analyze the geometry see here it came like this this is not good compared to the earlier one this is not good compared to the earlier one so directly i am going to delete instead of uh, correcting this geometry i am deleting this i am just showcasing the things how the hypermesh has the different mid surface option at last i am using the only offset i am using just select the surface say extract just i am implementing the what and all the hypermesh mid surface option just i am using that option to get a better mid surface why i need a mid surface i am going to create my elements i am going to create my 2d elements on that mid surface so i need a proper plane i need a good surface to create my elements switch off the original cat and you can observe it see this is how i got now what we can do in hypermesh the one advantage in you when the advantage of extracting the mid surface in hypermesh is it will give three different kinds see it will give three different options you can use the you can extract the three different options that is also possible and using the three mid planes whichever is perfect or whichever is closer to the mid surface or mid plane you can use that now what i am going to do i'll just create one collector see the collect collect collector create option is available here or else come for the model tree do right click say create what do you want to create i'm going to i'm interested to creating color components see the component has created if you want to give any you can give any name or else if you come here see the blue arrow the blue com box is there click on that give any name give any name you can choose any color say create so i have created one collector i what i'll do now i'm just moving my surface to one collector that's all i did now my in, my interest is again i'm going to create the mid surface why because i'm going to i'm going to use two mid surface option for the better mesh select the surface say create See, now mid surface is ready now what we have to do now we'll start correcting the mid surface why we have why we need to start correcting the mid surface means i am looking for a better mesh so instead of instead of struggling to that i have extracted the two mid surfaces we'll we'll use one mid surface for creating element see as you can see some of the visual <coughs> graphics see you can see i am tilting my object or i am tilting my component 
you can see the purple and the gray lines are it means both the both the surfaces are in the same plane both my surfaces are in the same plane see both my surfaces are in the same plane so what what i will do i will switch on the purple component i'll just go by creating any surface as we can see the surface is not good See, the surface is not good. I have deleted the surface. Say here also say delete. And here also I'm deleting. Now after deleting, we need to create manually. So as we know, to create manually surface like this, see, I have created one surface. So this is how you need to proceed for all the wear. Where and all the mid surface is not come properly, then you need to extract the mid surface like this. Then, I am checking for this section. I am checking for this section. Just switch on the points. As we can see, it is in the peri peri periphery of the GUI. Switch on the fixed points. See, switch on the fixed points. As we can see, some of the surfaces are not connected. See, all these red lines are not connected. What I do, I go for the geometry. I go for the quick edit. I am just replacing this point, this to this. I am selecting this to this. And now observe the CAD. See, now I have recreated or rearranged my CAD. Why I have rearranged? Have it thought like my, after extracting the mid surface, we need to do some topology corrections. We need to do some topology corrections. As I mentioned in my module two, See, after extracting the mid surface also, we are going to do topology refine. What is topology refine means after correct, after extracting the mid surface, we need to correct the geometry. We need to correct the geometry as per the original CAD. As you can see now, I extended my rib till this point. I have extended my rib till this point. Why? Because here earlier, there was no connectivity. My rib was like this. So if I mesh like this, obviously I will not get the elements equal connectivity and I will not take good elements and I will not connect the elements after completing the mesh. So instead of that, correct the geometry now only. If the CAD is good, obviously you will get a good mesh. See, like this, you have to correct all the way. See, you have to correct all the way where and all the geometry is not proper. You just, I'm just replacing my node with the rip point. Like this, you need to correct your CAD or you need to correct your mid surface after creating. See, now I got it yellow line. My rip is sharing between these surfaces. Like this, you need to do for all the, all the rip portions, where and all it is not connected. Where and all it is not connected, there you have to take, there you have to take care of these things. Now, I have shown how to connect the rip if the surfaces are not connected. Next, we'll move on to the this part. Obviously, we know some features are like this. If it is a hole, there might be a normal hole or there might be a bolt hole. If it is a bolt hole, what we need to do, we need to create one washer to it. How to create the washer? Same in the geometry page. Come for quick edit. I'm just going to represent my bolt using one washer. Using one washer, how to create the washer? Give some offset value here. Say washer split, you create the washer. You may ask me why you need to create a washer means I'm going to represent my board using extra one layer of it, using one extra washer to it. Why? Because we know obviously in any of the automotive car, if it is a bolt means there is a longer time, there is a stress applicable. Always there is a stress in the bolt location. To, <clears throat> to represent that, I'm going to create one washer line for this, one washer line for this hole, and I'm representing this in a washer elements. So this is how you need to capture the bolt holes. Like this, by creating one washer, these are the topology corrections which you need to do before starting the machine. Once you extracted the mid surface, means it is not done to, it is not the way to start the machine. You need, after extracting the mid surface also, we need to do these geometry corrections. Like as I did, connect the surface, connect the surface where and all it is required. 
If the surface is not good, delete the surface and recreate the surface using the surface creation option. Later on, if any bolts are coming means create one washer line for the bolt holes. Create one washer line for the bolt holes. Now switch on the original cap. I'm just going with the <coughs> mid surface, whether the extracted mid surface is in the mid plane or not. Just randomly I'm going, see here and all it is extracted. See, this is my mid plane. Is this in between the two main surfaces like this? And coming for this, this area, you can see it is in the mid plane only. For the better visualization, switch off the <coughs> points. Switch off the points. As you can see, see here, these are the two. This is my x plane, positive x direct, positive z direction, and this is a negative z direction. In between these only we are going to extract one mid plane. See, I will show you. See, this is one plane. This is, this is the top plane and this is the bottom plane and this is my mid surface. See, this is the mid surface. In between these two, I should get a mid plane. Then I can start my meshing. Now you can ask me, okay, she's extracting the mid surface. She is extracting the mid surface. Okay, after extracting the mid surface, why we need to create elements on the mid surface itself? And you can ask me, okay, after creating the elements on the mid plane, how it will relate to the original CAD? So that means after we creating the after we creating any elements on the mid plane, see, I'll I will deploy my elements here. I will create my elements on this section, and I'm going to give the thickness. I'm going to thick. I'm going to give the thickness for this element to match with this CAD, to match with my original CAD. To match with my original CAD, this is a part of assigning the thickness. This is this is where we are going to give the thickness. We are going to give the thickness for the mid-plane elements, for the mid-plane elements. Now we have successfully extracted the mid-surface and we, we done we done some topology correction for the mid-surface also. Now we'll move on to the meshing. Now, why we need to do meshing? Okay, we have some geometry and we can, so after designing the CAD, it will come for the CA engineer. For the CA engineer also, there is a work from the geometry side. Now we are done with the geometry section. Now let's move on to the meshing. As I discussed yesterday's class, see, here you can see in this circle, there are infinite number of points are there and I know my degrees of freedom. That is six. And the equation, I can't define the equation. Why? Because I don't know the how many number of points are there. See here, I don't know how many number of points are there. But if I take the same circle to finite element analysis, if I take the same thing to my finite element analysis, I have divided into eight nodes. I have divided into eight nodes to four elements. To four elements I have divided. And we know what are degrees of freedom. There are six degrees of freedoms are there, three translational motion, and three rotational. So there are six degrees of freedom for any node, there are six degrees of freedom. Now I know the number of nodes and I know the degrees of freedom. So eight, eight into six, it is 48. So for this, for this circle, for this portion, there are 48 equations are there to analyze this much of portion. This is how the software works. This is how the meshing works behind the software. So meshing, the basic idea of meshing is to make the calculations only at the limited points and interpolate the results for the entire surface, for the entire surface like this. So you may ask me what are degrees of freedom means? Any continuous object, see, any continuous object has an infinite degrees of freedom and it is not possible to solve. See, for this component, it is an infinite degrees of freedom. I can't define anything here. But if I know, and if I am defining to equal number of nodes or the, and the known number of nodes, then I can give the equation to my software to solve this. So <clears throat> this is the theory behind the machine. And if I, know, if I know the number of nodes and if I know the degrees of freedom, it is easy to do. The basic idea of meshing is this is what. Next, we are doing the 2D meshing. And in, for the 2D meshing, only two type of elements are available in hypermesh. One is triangular element and the next is a quadrilateral element. As we already know, it's a tria means it is a three corner nodes. See, 
it is a three corner nodes and if it's a quad means it is a four corner nodes uh, if we come for the trial again there are two kinds as we know in your academics there is a first order elements and it is a second order elements the first and second order elements the we call it is academics but in hypermesh or in any of the cae industry we call it as linear elements and parabolic elements it means the same node the corner node is divided between the mid node the corner node is divided between the mid node it means it is a parabolic element or second order element the basically we have only two shapes one is triangular shape one is quadrilateral shape again it is subdivided into first and the second order these are the two elements which are available to create any 2d meshing any 2d meshing okay now let's move on to the auto meshing the basically the auto meshing panel is available in functional key f12 the functional key of well is meant to do the meshing <clears throat> i'll start in hypermesh see i have extracted the mid surface switch on my mid surface see this is my mid surface and i'm going with the functional key f12 see this this window with this panel will appear if you click on the functional key f12 this panel will appear here i can do for the, i can create the elements on the surface or after creating the elements if you if you want to do any remesh option you have to come for the elements so first you need to select the surface and mesh it later on if you want to create any remesh option you have to come for this next here if you come if if you come for this element size i have given as a 4 what is it means means i am going to create all my elements with the 4 mm as my global element size it means i don't know how many numbers how many number of elements i can create here but all my elements length should be the 4 mm i'm asking my or i'm requesting my software okay if it is a 1000 1000 number of elements all the 1000 number of element more or less should be 4 mm only 4 mm this is the element size or we can call it as global element size according to this number only the software will start creating the elements then he, this is for the elements to current component for which collector you are going to mesh this is the collector representation and as i said here the first order is there if you toggle this it, the second order also it will come and this is the flow on the map it's related to the creation of the elements it is related to the creation of the elements see one example i do i'll select the surface here i have kept it as a mixed mode in the mixed mode you can see the shape like this see if you keep on if you see there are the four options four options in the sense only only the quad elements also you can create see that as per the shape it will work here mixed mode if i keep means one triangular option or one square option or if you want only the tri elements that is also possible or if you want only the rectangular tri elements that is also possible see we'll go one by one see i'm taking this surface same mesh if you mesh this surface you can see some of the square elements also there and triangular elements also there this is called mixed option this is called mixed option but if you choose only quads see if you choose only quads means see here you will not get even a one triangular element also you will not see even one tria elements also see this is how this options work or uh, if you want only triangular elements see switch on see this is equilateral trias these are equilateral trias and can we can it is possible to do r trias also it is right angular triangular elements but basically we prefer to go with mixed mode only we are going to prefer with mixed mode only we are not choosing only tria or we are not choosing only um, quad elements why because my requirement of my project is mixed mode sometimes what happen the requirement if it is a crash analysis we are going to request with the only the quad elements or sometimes what happen if you are going for any engine mount or casting components then we are selecting the triangular element or equilateral triangular element but basically most of the cases we are meshing with the mixed mode wherever you work in all of the ca industry for most of the cases we are going to with a mixed mode only it why because so i can if the surface is not good or if, if i want to create exact features and all i can use the four corner nodes or i can use the three corner nodes and using this mixed mode it is easy to capture it is easy to capture 
So let's start doing the meshing for this component. <clears throat> Before starting the meshing, keep it in mind, don't start the meshing from the surfaces like this. See surfaces like this, don't start it here. We should start from the fillets or we should start from the washers like this. First mesh this one. For meshing, the, for meshing this one, first select the surface like this in the left click, select the surface and click on mesh. See, some of the nodes are created. So the green ones, some of the elements are created. The number is there, you know, 30 and 24. It is the node count. You can increase and you can decrease also. You can increase and decrease also. See, density means this only. Number, the increasing number of, I'm doing, no, this is the density. It means I, I can increase or decrease. I can increase or decrease. See, I have created some of the elements over here. I have created some of the elements over here. So one thing, keep it in mind, when you are meshing for the component like this, in the washer side, don't keep any trio elements. This is the basic fundamental. Okay. We'll move on to the next washer. See, you can select it and you can mesh it like this. You can select it and you can mesh it like this. This is how we need to mesh it. Then what if you want to do remesh or how to do rip capturing and all, see, select the rip and select the mesh. See, this is how you need to mesh. Coming to this part, select the surface and mesh it. See, like that, you need to mesh all the way. But how to do re remesh? We know how to create the elements. Now how to do remesh means, First, select the surface and mesh this one. See, this, this is how I got the mesh. And we can see here, there are bunch of trias. There are bunch of trias are there here. So I'm coming back to same F12 panel. Here, instead of choosing the surface, I'm selecting the elements. Select the elements and select the elements which you want to do remesh. The concept of doing the remesh, it is only because to improve the mesh quality. The concept of doing the remesh to improve the mesh quality. Why? Because if some of, if it is a more number of trias, or if it is a, if the features are not captured properly by doing the auto mesh option, we can make use of this auto remesh. Remesh means in the same F12 panel, instead of selecting the surface, select the elements. See how every time you do remesh, every time you will get the different shapes of elements different different shapes of element like this see this is how the remesh works if you want if you want you can do any remesh see for the washer also you can do remesh see again once you every time you do remesh every time the node density will get changed every time the element shape will get changed either it may get quad or either it may get triangular element be careful when you are doing remesh option when you are doing remesh option so we can create all the way surfaces or you can select once at a time like this like this also you can create the elements like this see like this also you can create it's if it coming to the washer side increase the node increase the node try to match these two same only when it is on the washer line so like this you can create the surface or by selecting by surface by surface also you can do see like this like this also you can create you can create the elements so this is how the auto mesh panel work. This is how, this is the basic thing that how the auto mesh panel works. Now we learned how to create the elements and we learned how to do the remesh option. Next, after creating the elements and all, see, after I have created some of the elements on the surface, let's create all the elements in one shot. I'm selecting all the surfaces and I'm asking to mesh. It is all this number, it is the density of the node. It means you, you can increase or decrease this one. See, you can increase or decrease this one. See, I have created some of the elements. Now we'll move on to the quality parameters. I have created some of the elements. How, to, what is in quality parameters or why the quality parameters are required? See, just we have seen for creating any elements on the surfaces, either it may be a quad or it may be a triangular shape. But the requirement is it should be a perfect square or it, if you are creating the quad element, it should be a perfect square. Or if you are creating a triangular element, it should be equilateral triangle. But sometimes what happen, but sometimes what happen here and all, 
all the way we may fail to capture perfect square and the perfect quad why because see this is a circular surface here also the circular is there so to match this quad or to capture this quad i may fail to create the perfect square and the perfect equilateral triangular that time what i do i will go with the instead of the 60 60 degree of the triangular element i may go with the 45 or 80 degree or for the instead of going with the square shape i may go with the rectangular shape see this is not in perfect see as you can see this is a perfect square element see this is a perfect square element but if you come for this this is not in square element this is not in perfect square element see this is what to match this cad or to capture this one i may go the elements like this so when you are going to do when you are going to create the element like this means there is a defined range there is a defined numbers this is there is a defined numbers to so within this numbers only all your element should lie this is what the quality parameters this is what the quality parameter is if we fail to keep the square perfect square and equilateral triangle then we having some certain defined numbers with that number only we are going to keep our elements what are the quality parameters we are going to look into for the 2d elements means we are going to check for the warpage we are going to check for the aspect ratio and the minimum and the maximum length minimum and the maximum angle for the quad and the triangular element this quality panel is available in the f10 the functional key f10 if you go on click on the functional key f10 see i am in my hypermesh panel click on the functional key f10 see come for the 2d page if you select the 2d page you can see different kind of quality parameters and this quality parameters it is not this number will not be same for all the machine for all the analysis this number will change it is related to the global element size and it is related to the type of analysis you are going to do see the main the main quality parameters i am going to tell is what page what is and what page what page means sometimes what happen to capture any of the things like this to capture the things like this see you can see the what page means some of the node see some of the element which are not on the perfect plane which are not on the perfect plane i will show you here i have given my what page ratio as 15 it means see 80 87 elements are failing so i am going to highlight those elements see i am going to i am going to request that element see as you can see these elements see see the difference between this element to this element you can see see it should be see one is the one is the it should match with these nodes it is not on the perfect plane or it is not on the within the defined 15 degree of the warpage so here this node is out of the plane this node is out of the plane so it is showing warpage again if you click on the, you select this element see it is showing as a 20 26 degree it means it is not on the perfect plane or either it is not less than the 15 degree so it is failing warpage means elements which are not on the plane or some of the elements are fail to capture the planar surface so when the warp that time the warpage arises the amount by which an element or element phase we deviates being a planar deviates being a planar here this element or this element phase element or element phase is not the planar one see you can compare to these three nodes see this is my x plane y plane and this is my z plane this node is not on either of these three this node is not on either of these three or this node is not either of the more than the 15 degree so i am getting a warpage this is one of the major quality parameter that you should clear you should clear how to clear it means just for the one example i will show now see this has came down now come back to f10 again come back to f10 click on this now it is showing see it is showing 1.3 degree so this is how you need to clear the quality this is how you need to clear the quality and warpage means the element or element phase 
which is deviates being a planar see it was it was deviating being a planar and it is not more it is more than the 15 degree so it is failing for the warpage the warpage is one of the main important quality parameter for the 2d elements next next important thing is aspect what is an aspect means it is the maximum element length to the minimum element length see now for this component 20 elements are failing 20 elements are failing we'll check those elements i'm retrieving those elements i'm telling was warp page means it is a maximum element length to the minimum element length see you can see it here. I'm shrinking the elements. I'm taking this only one example. See, you can see, you can see this element. I'm going to randomly add the numbers. See, even though this is a quad element, even though this is a quad element, see, observe the highlighted element. You observe this one. This is a four corner node, but it is not, but these two, this is not the opposite edges are not equal. The opposite edges are not equal. So what is an aspect ratio means the difference between the maximum. See, this is my maximum element length and this is the minimum element length. The difference between these two should be within the ratio of five. If it is not, if it is a more than that of five means it will fail for the aspect. Aspect is also one of the important quality parameters that we need to clear. See, aspect should be more than the five. The, de the definition of the aspect ratio is maximum element length to the minimum element length. Next comes to the length. The, it is the length of the element. See, my length of the element I'm asking here is 1 mm. And these numbers are not restricted. I randomly have selected this number. It is based on the global element size. For my component, I have assigned the global element size as 4 mm. So according to the 4 mm only, I have defined this range of numbers. I have defined this range of numbers. Now, we will unmask all the things. We will unmask all the things. Now we will check for the minimum element length. The concept of minimum element length is, okay, we are defined the sum of the elements. We are defined the global elements as 4 mm, but we may fail to capture all the way 4 mm. We may fail to capture all the way 4 mm. That time I'm having a transition of, okay, till 1 mm or till 2 mm, I can keep the elements. This is what the minimum element length. Then comes to the same way, it is the maximum. You can see the greater symbol. You can see the greater symbol here. It is 6 mm. The same concept applies here. See, some regions, see, the regions like this, you can observe it here. There is a difference between this element. There is a difference between this element. It is 8. And there is a difference between this element. To capture the features or to create the element for this, uh, this side, I'm having till 6 mm of the Till 6 mm, I can go with the maximum element length. And these numbers is based on the global element size. For example, if we are meshing for the 10 mm means, obviously the maximum element length will get changed. Will make the maximum element will get changed. The next quality, the important quality parameters are minimum and the maximum triangular elements. As I said, if we fail to keep the equilateral and equal, equilateral trias, and the perfect squared means th there is a defined range. The angle should be within the 20 degree or it should be more than the 120 degree, interior and the exterior angles. Same way for the quads also. See, I've defined as a 20. See, here the 44 elements are failing. I'm just showing those elements, the elements which are failing for the quality. See, these are the elements or these are the trias which are failing for the quality. Here, here, if you go and click on this triangular element, see, these are the elements which are failing for the quality. And these are the important quality parameters which we check <coughs> before we finalizing our model. One is the warp page, aspect ratio, minimum and the maximum length of the element, minimum and the maximum angle for the quartz angle. The last but not the least important is Jacobian. What are Jacobian means? Sometimes, see, you can observe, you just observe the highlighted elements. See, as I said, this is not a perfect square or this is not a perfect rectangle. But 
I'm having some concession here. See, it should be less than the 70, 70%. 70 it means if it is in 100% perfect square means need not to worry. But I'm having, I can go till 70%. It should match with the it should match with a perfect square or perfect rectangle shape. This is how the Jacobian works. It is a measure of deviation of an element being in perfectly ideal shape, or being in ideally perfect shape. This is not in a perfect shape, but it is 70% matching with a square, a perfect square element. And Jacobian is also one of the important quality parameter. So these are the important quality parameters which we which we check for doing any of the machine or any of the CA industries following minimum and the maximum angles, Jacobian, warpage, aspect ratio, and the minimum and the maximum length for the for the created elements. Next, okay, we have done with clearing the quality parameters and what are the additional checks which are required before finalizing the 2D elements. Before finalizing the 2D elements, one is the element free edges. This is the one of the dangerous quality parameters which we need to clear. There, there should not be any free edges throughout your model and carrying the duplicate means we are not supposed to keep any duplicate elements. It means, say for example, you are having 10 elements, it, it, it's of sum of the mass. Say for example, it is 10, it is mass of 10. But if it is duplicated two times, means obviously the mass will get increased. So we are not supposed to keep any duplicate elements and the nodes also we are not supposed to keep. And we have to set the shell normals and all my elements should be on the geometry. All my elements should be on the geometry. See, as you can see, this different image, this I have completed this model. See, as you can see, in the washer side, I have not kept any triangular elements. I have kept all the ribs. I have kept all the ribs, as you can see. And I've captured all the features also. You can check with switch on in the original CAD. See, you can observe this mesh. I have completed this mesh and I have cleared the quality parameters also. Now, the other important quality parameters is free edge. How to check the free edge? Shift F3, select the component and say find edge. See, select the component and say find edge. Only this much free edge I'm getting. It means, see, my component is like this means or you click on the mid surface. See, if you click on the mid surface, only these elements, the outer boundary of the element should highlight. The outer boundary of the elements only should I highlight. This is how the free, this is how the free edge works. See, only this, this much only should appear. This is the outer boundary of the elements. If you click on by adjacent means all your get elements will appear. All your elements will appear. This is, this is what the free edge does. And this is also a, one of the important quality parameter that we need to check when you are doing any of the 2D meshing. Next important thing is adjusting the normals. Adjusting the normals is available in Shift F10. Adjusting the normals is available in Shift F10. Select the displayed elements, set display. See, as you can see, some of the vector directions are there. I just zoom in some way. As you can see, see, it is pointing to outside or else you can make it as a color display also. Select the element, say display. As you can see, the red and the yellow, the red and the blue lines are there. It means it is just representation of positive z-axis and the negative z-axis. So we need to adjust these elements. How to adjust the elements? Say display. Here, I want to adjust these elements. How to adjust means select the element like this. I'm going the face I'm selecting say display, say reverse. Now what I do, I will again, I will check for my normals. See, this much I have adjusted. Like this, all either it should be in the red plane or it should be on the blue plane, blue plane. Don't keep the red and blue like this. Don't keep the elements like this. This is not an acceptable quality parameter. So you have to correct manually. You have to correct manually. How to correct means as I did, now select the, select the elements which are not on the correct normal and check it every time you have to check manually. Every time you have to check manually. See, either it should be, as I, tell, as I said, either it should be in the red plane or it should be in the blue plane. This is also an important quality parameter that you should take care. 
you should take care when you are completing your 2d machine next comes to the thickness i have mentioned in my, in this topic assigning the thickness so what is assigning the thickness means after you define after you extracted the mid surface after you extracted the mid surface see in this mid surface you can see you can see you can see the thickness of the component how to see the thickness of the component in the mid surface in that in this drop down there is an called review thickness option is there select this one and select the surface which you want to check for the thickness see it is a 3 mm it is showing 3 mm means it is a 3 mm of thickness come for this side check for this observe the observe the number it is 5 mm all the hypermesh is built in millimeter all the hypermesh measurements are built in millimeter so every day i am going to telling as a mm only the ribs are 5 mm of thickness and come for this surface this flat surface is 3 mm of thickness and check it here when you are assigning the thickness you have to check like this only by surface to surface only you have to go and you have to analyze the things here it is maximum thickness is 5 mm so what we need to do we have to create the two collectors one is for 3 mm and one is for 5 mm see i have created the two collector one is for 3 mm and one is for 5 mm so after assigning the thickness what you need to do after i have meshed my component i have assigned the thickness i have checked all the i have checked for quality parameters and i have checked for the other things also now i am done with my all the things now i have assigned the thickness see my elements are in the mid plane after you complete your machine all your element should be like this it should be on the mid plane it should be on the mid plane like this as you can see this black line it is the element representation see these are the element representation all your element should be on this mid plane like this okay now we have created the mid surface and we have assigned the thickness we have to check it whether it is matching with the original cad or not so i have assigned the thickness to my component and review this one see all the elements are on the original geometry see here you can see it properly see after assigning the thickness it should match with the original cad see in the detailed view in the detailed view i am looking if the if the if the cad is like this and after completing the machine after you assigning the thickness all your element should look like this it means you have captured the features completely you can see my you can see my mesh anywhere all the elements are matching with the cad even for the ribs also see observe the ribs and you can come for this portion also all my elements are matching with the original cad this is a standard procedure which we are following or this is the same procedure that every ca industry is following to do 2d machine starting from the geometry correction to the extract in the mid surface creating the elements selecting the elements and the quality criteria and the quality parameters and the free edges normals these things we are following to do to execute any of the 2d machine execute to any of the 2d machine see we have <coughs> now we have done with other quality checks also now the important the in the at the final of this session the important thing is how not to mesh meshing means it is not it is not just like creating the elements randomly no it is not like that meshing means the reason set of procedures or the reason set of guidelines the element should be in a proper way it means as you can see see these two if the bunch of trias are not alone are see in the single node these two trias are sharing this is not allowed and as you can see in the yellow images opposite trias are not allowed this is a back to back trias are not allowed these trias are not allowed in your machine so please be careful when you are creating any element see like this this is the opposite trias this is not allowed how to clear it means just say remesh see it we want the elements to be like this and the back to back trias also it is not allowed these are not allowed this is this is what you are not supposed to keep any trias and the trias like this trias are next to the washers is not allowed so be careful when you are meshing and next comes to the these flow of elements see these flow of elements is not allowed we we require equal flow see we require equal flow you do auto remesh or you can do smoothing option also see select the elements select the elements which you want to smooth and smooth the elements see 
you will get a proper flow all my element flow should be like this it should not be zigzag it should not be deviate from the geometry all all my elements and node should be on the proper elements deviation means i will show you what is an element deviation element deviation means my node should be on the plane only or to the geometry only as you can see i have just moved these elements out of the plane switch on the original cad and observe it here and carefully observe this region see here my nodes are not on the plane this is not the way to capture this one so what you need to do you need to align to the original cad you need to align to the original cad this is the you should my nodes are my element should not be or out of the plane or should not deviate from the original cad we have we know how to clear the back to back trias see on the fillets don't keep any trias and the edges also and i have shown in the washer section also or in any of the whole sections also don't keep any trias and this zigzag are only don't keep randomly like this see or don't keep only elements elements see this is an uh, see th this diamond shaped elements are not allowed to keep either it should be either it should be a rectangle or either it should be a triangle don't keep this rotating elements these rotating elements are not allowed these are not allowed in the machine and we are not supposed to keep the elements like this it should be like this and the flow of element as i showed don't keep like this zigzag element it the flow should be in a proper way this is the <clears throat> this is what like till now what i have discussed starting from the topology to this mesh flow the same way you need to carry out to complete your 2d meshing and the same way only that all the ca industries following this is the same guidelines for the do, for doing to create any of the 2d elements on the mid plane but before creating the elements be careful when you are in the mid surface if your mid surface is good obviously you will get a good elements if the elements are good they, they need not to worry for the quality parameters if the quality parameters are okay then you should not having any free edges and we have to set for the normals these are the basic guidelines you should know before you create any of the elements before you create any of the elements and i hope you this video was this video is very helpful and you understand the concept of what i have discussed to create any of your 2d elements on the mid plane um to create any of the on the mid plane thank you if 